This week's Pilch Point with Avram Pilch is proudly powered by Monster Products. The headphones on my head, the Monster Elements, available in on-ear and full over-ear. Um, also, a whole variety of other styles of headsets from in-ear uh, to sports styles, waterproof, Bluetooth and corded to Bluetooth speakers ranging from the tiny hotshot to the giant monster blaster and of course all of the cables to connect them and your home entertainment and computer systems are available by going to f5live.tv slash monster. And that music means that it is time for the Pilch Point with online editorial director of Laptop Magazine and Tom's Guide, Avram Pilch. Avram, you're back. Yes, I'm excited. It's so excited good to have you back. It's good to be back, but it was good to be there. Yes. Computex was awesome this year. I love going to Computex Taipei. It's my favorite tech show of the year because I love going to Taiwan and because it's just always a really exciting PC show, particularly to be in the place where so much of the PC, so much of the PC industry uh, is located, and so much—I wouldn't say so much the manufacturing takes place because that's really in mainland China, but so much of the development takes place. So, uh, you know, obviously a big show for the major Taiwanese manufacturers like MSI and ASUS um, and Gigabyte and Acer were there too, um, but. Uh, also just a big show for new technologies. We always see lots of products. This show was v- very much a laptop show. There was a lot of laptop new laptops introduced and there were a lot of and there were st- a couple of really really important new laptop technologies introduced. So, one of them uh one of them one of them was um the new and I'm the most excited about this was new the new Windows on ARM initiative. Uh-huh. Um, so Qualcomm for the first, well, should I say for the first time? Yeah. For the first time with windows 10 Qualcomm, uh, which makes the Snapdragon chips and Microsoft announced that they are working together to, to come out with something called the always connected PC. Uh, and it is going to run full windows 10 running every windows 10 app, win 32 apps, uh, et cetera, on a Snapdragon 835 chip. Uh, and these new generation of laptops are going to have uh, a really strong connected standby, long battery life. They're going to be really thin and light because Snapdragon is like a third. The motherboard is like a third the size of an Intel uh, motherboard. But, um, you know, we're going to start seeing those toward the end of the year. And it's going to be fascinating to see how is the performance going to be? Mm-hmm. How is the battery life going to be? Is this going to be another you know, Windows RT type of situation? Well, the answer is probably no, because it can run all the apps. Right. Um, Although apparently I I read I can't do 64-bit Win32 apps. Um, Well, anything, any uh, manufacturer or developer who's publishing uh, something in not any configuration mode would be insane. Yeah, so it's, you know, we'll, it'll, it remains to be seen how this is going to w- work out, but it's fascinating. We're going to get a whole new type of laptop to review, so that's going to be exciting to see, um, you know, whether this sort of falls more on the side. Of, it's going to be a lot more expensive than Chromebooks, uh, we hear, so it's not going to be a competitor for Chromebooks, plus it runs full Windows, uh, but sort of who is going to gravitate toward it's going to be interesting. Uh, because Nvidia, uh, not Nvidia, Qualcomm said that they're not really targeting business users at this point. Maybe in the future, but they're targeting people who need to be connected all the time. Um, I think that applies to a lot of people, but it applies the most to people who are working. So, right. um, you know, it, it it's definitely going to be something where they're going to really try and upsell people to get LTE, to get their laptop with LTE. Um, but the, I think the bigger question is, how is having it on Snapdragon going to affect things like battery life and performance? And how is this always connected? Um, how is this, you know, constant connectivity going to work? We know right now that there is, um, you know, there's supposed to be some level of 
um, you know, connected, uh, what do you call it, when you're connected while asleep, um, is supposed to be built into Windows now to an extent, but it doesn't really, I've never had that work. I've never had it where you put your computer to sleep and then you wake up and your email is like been completely outlook still been downloading while, while it was asleep. Right. Like, like that doesn't happen. So I guess the question is, are they going to make that any more, um, functional, uh, with these new chips or are they just going to do more of the same? Cause obviously I think the Holy grail is you're uploading a video. I mean, you must have had this experience a million times. You're uploading a video on your laptop you go to get into a cab or something. You got you close your computer to go to sleep. You put it in your bag. Well, your video will just stop, so we'll uh-huh. keep uploading, and probably won't even resume uploading from where it was. Yeah. So, like, how do you? How does it manage big uploads and downloads and things like that? Can yeah. it? Can it do that while while it's quote unquote asleep, like your phone can? Right. Um. That's what you know. That's what I'd like to see. So. Well, um, you know, considering. Uh, Considering Windows 10 has has the Windows One core, uh, it's always possible that the the behavior would be have some sort of like hybrid capability between what we know as traditional Windows 10 and then what we know here on the laptop that I'm using, which is Windows 10 and Continuum. You know, a phone behavior running the same core as regular Windows 10. There's always the possibility that uh that somewhere in there, there could be a middle ground specifically for ARM. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd really like to, to see that because, I mean, one of the things Qualcomm was touting was you people want their laptop be, to behave more like their phone, wake up from sleep quickly, continue to download and upload things while it's asleep, um, you know, have really long standby times. Um, honestly, I don't think standby times on laptops are that much of a weakness right now. You you know, even on my laptop, I'm getting days and days of standby with very little um, battery drainage. So I think the real question is, what can it do when it's in standby? Right. Um, so that's obviously yeah, what, very exciting. Like, what what does standby mean on these new machines? We know what it means today, and it's not yeah. ideal. <laughs> will we will we see a different behavior on standby? Yeah, like, we like inter- what Qualcomm is talking about. Yeah, we interviewed a Microsoft exec who said this is just going to take better advantage of connected standby, like for better battery life. So I'm not really sure if we're going to get added functionality. I hope that we will. The other really big technology that was announced is NVIDIA Max-Q. Uh, and that is an initiative to make... Uh, laptops with discrete video cards with high-end discrete video cards like nvidia gtx 1080 which is the highest you know 1080 and 1080 ti Mm -hmm. uh to make the them thinner and lighter and quieter um so we saw a number of like about five new laptops that came out that use max q uh you know max q design standards it's really design standard more than a technology you know more than a new technology it's an initiative sort of like intel's ultrabook initiative to make right. laptops thinner and lighter well it's to make gaming laptops thinner and lighter uh, and we saw if, you know obviously there's somewhat of a performance trade-off they end up i think throttling the gpu a bit to get there um but we saw some really impressive laptops based on it like the asus rog zephyrus yes an absolutely beautiful laptop which we named our best overall laptop of computex uh absolutely just beautiful looking thin just crazy looking keyboard uh beautiful laptop um so those were two really really major technologies that rolled out um uh, obviously a lot of other things we saw evolving um just more really thin and light uh systems that were really nice and cheap like um you know unbelievable acer spin one uh two and one this is what you get for 329 dollars you get a 1080p ips display and a metal chassis wow for 329 dollars i mean it's a pentium okay you know it's not it's not it's not high performance but you're getting an ips panel and it looked really good you know Uh, similarly asus has their vivobook 15s which is a 15 inch notebook that weighs i think 3.2 pounds for 15 inches. Wow. And it's 499. So, 
you know, pre- that's previously getting up into like Dell XPS 15 territory, and it's lighter than the Dell XPS 15, which is 9.99. So, you know, things are getting lighter, they're getting smaller, they're getting more powerful. Um, that seems to happen every year, but we definitely saw some really big leaps forward there. Um, but yeah, what's I was really gonna say that that doesn't sound iterative. That sounds like like a leap. I mean, the ZenBook Flip. Uh, Flip S is another one where it's the lightest, it's the thinnest two in one at uh, 0.42 inches thick. Um, you know, super duper thin um, two in one. Now, at a certain point, it's diminishing returns. Like, do you really need it that thin? Um, but it's, you know, it's certainly they're pushing the envelope. Asus had a fantastic show, they introduced a lot of stuff. MSI uh, blew our minds with their GT75 uh, Titan, which has 12, up to 12 different heat, uh, different heat pipes to keep it cool so that it can give you maximum performance when you have your 1080 in SLI uh, with it. So these things just are, are pushing and pushing the envelope in terms of both performance and, um, you know, thin and light. Well, not the Titan, that's pretty thick, but... You know, you, you're, we're pushing the performance on both ends. It's it's pretty impressive to see. Uh, and we're just, the, the good couple of trends that we're seeing are more laptops that are trying to hit a color mark rather than just be a certain resolution. Like, we're seeing more companies talk about and color gamut and uh, IPS and, and wider color range so you're not just getting dull colors. Uh and uh, I, we saw a couple more companies uh, trying to go into the graphics amp space, uh, which is a very welcome thing because we could use more uh, competition and innovation and people making external graphics, you know, allowing you to, to live the, the mobile dream of having like a super thin laptop. And then you could come to your desk, you could take your Thunderbolt 3 connection, you connect it to a graphics amp where you're running like the, you know, high-end graphics card like an nvidia 1080 and uh you know you can do vr and you can do whatever you want then you pick up your laptop and you stick on your lap and still two and a half pounds or whatever so um you know that those are all uh pretty exciting things did you hear anything from computex that you really thought was uh interesting um so obviously we've talked in the past we've made sure to define interesting Okay. Interesting. It to... doesn't necessarily mean good. <laughs> right. Interesting. There's the. Uh, I can't think of the the name of it. Uh, it was. It was described as a robotic selfie computer. Hmm. I think I missed that one. <laughs> Do you remember what that was called, Alante? I don't either. And for some reason, like, I'm not getting. I mean, selfie drones. drones have been around. There have been a few selfie drones. We saw one at CES. We reviewed one. You know that'll follow. That'll fly and follow you. It was not a big, as far as I could see, drone show. It was not a big robot show. Um, somewhat disappointingly, it was primarily like everywhere I went. It was PCs of various kinds. It was laptops. It was desktops. It was all in ones, and it was peripherals. Um, oh, oh, this was absolutely a pc case <laughs> pc um, cases there were some great mods I'll, I'll see if we can put up the slideshow i took some some pictures there were some really always near the thermal take booth they have some type of competition and they had some crazy looking pcs uh pc cases over there and of course you know companies are really pushing the envelope of what you can do with the pc case yeah. i saw one the corsair i uh, was the corsair suite and they had a case, I forget what it was called, it was a concept. It was like easily like three and a half, four feet tall. It weighed like, well, they hadn't weighed, I don't think they weighed it without stuff. And it was at least 150 pounds. Oof. And it had room in it for something like 34 case fans and two discrete computers. <laughs> you could have, so you could have. That was not the noun I was expecting at the end of that sentence. Like discrete graphics cards or something? Yeah, I was not you know, expecting anything computers. Anything has room for two discrete graphics cards. That's nothing. I could, <laughs> two discrete, I could fit two discrete graphics cards in my back pocket. No, this, <laughs> this thing, 
this thing had room for two discrete motherboards, power supplies, and everything that goes with them, uh, and with separate power switches if you want. So uh, I asked the guy from Corsair, like, what are you going to do with that? And he said, it could be his and hers computers, or it could be your streaming box and your gaming box in the same uh, computer. Or think about it, it could be the it could be the computer that you have me on, and then the rest of the podcast. Well, that's a fascinating idea. You know, so yeah, I've never seen that where you have like two separate computers in one case. Mind you, if you had two different cases or three different cases, you could probably fit them inside of this case. So, <laughs> but not with dozens of computer fans. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. It's crazy the extent that people will go. You kind of after a certain point of this modding that people are doing, it's like, do you even need to use a computer or just just look at it? Like, let's just look at it because the amount of effort that went into making it is probably more significant than the amount of effort you'll go into actually playing the playing the high end game or or whatever you want to do with it. But man, some of these things are real works of art. So so I found I, I found the computer that I was talking about. In fact. I found it on uh, your sister's site, Tom's Hardware. Um, the company is called InWin. Oh, InWin. I know InWin. And the computer is the WinBot. It is a giant sphere. And um, it's, got, it's got room for a crazy amount of, uh, of fans inside, too. But the thing that makes it weird is it's got binocular vision on the front. And it can actually, it'll rotate the sphere to follow a person. And you can give it gestures and stuff. I have absolutely no idea what the purpose of this is. I can't believe I missed this. This would have been like that. This would have been like a highlight of my show. That's awesome. <laughs> it is definitely bizarre. And they were using this obviously expensive computer. Because, you know, binocular vision and the ability to spin on its central axis um, to take pictures for, like, uh, uh, ID badges. <laughs> what? Why not? <laughs> Why not? And the pictures you know, it was taking weren't even great. <laughs> I, I must apologize to our listeners for not having seen this. <laughs> we do not. Uh, Tom's Hardware, who we're there with. Uh, goes and visits in when we don't normally visit them because they're primarily a, a case company yeah and we don't cover cases on tom's guide and laptop so i didn't ex but if i knew that there would have been a robotic selfie case there i would have absolutely i would have been there the first day um it's one of the strangest sentences you've said in a while right it's yeah so, it's so weird <laughs> <laughs> they 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 for for those uh for those listening and or watching, uh, Tom's Hardware has some some great pictures and a video on their website of the WinBot. So you will definitely want to go check that out because it's it's bizarre. Wow. But bizarre Man. in a fun way. Yeah, exactly. So that's the thing about Computex. It can be bizarre in a fun way. Yeah. So I, I strong. So if you ever get the chance to come with us, you really should. It's uh, it's absolutely a blast. As is as is just visiting Taiwan because sure. there's a lot of neat stuff there. So, um, so a uh, great show, and I encourage everyone to go to laptopmag.com and tomsguide.com where you can see all of our Computex coverage, especially our best of Computex uh, rundowns, which we have one on each site, uh, to to show you what the absolute coolest things we saw there were because I haven't even mentioned half of them. Well, well, that's good because we want people to go see yeah. all the rest yeah. over on the website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Abram, as always, I love hearing about your experiences at Computex. Uh, did, before we move on, sometimes during Computex and around Computex, you have a bizarre story to tell. Did, <laughs> did, did anything out of the ordinary happen to you this year? Unfortunately, not. Um, okay. I had a really lovely hotel. Uh, it was actually really clean and nice, and it had windows that looked out onto the actual actual Earth. It did not. 
it did not I did not end up with a hotel with a fake window in it like I did in previous years. <laughs> we uh, we talked about that with one of the uh, guests at Collision. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not this uh, this uh, I I got to tell everybody the best place to stay. I've stayed there a few years now and they actually revamped it so it's even better. It's called the Brother Hotel. Uh it's nice and clean. And and they have real windows. I can't say it like a fancy view, but I have real windows. Uh, so so bully for them. So not know. like so not like Windows RT. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't the Windows RT of, of where you can only see like one year. What Scott was talking about, I had a hotel room that had um, what do you call it? That had the um, a window box, a window box in it that looked like when you go to the Museum mm-hmm. of Natural History and they have those like dioramas with stuff like saber tooth tigers or whatever but the best looked... but the best part was that the lights changed colors throughout the day to simulate right. the outside <laughs> right so i thought that it was like a courtyard or something i was looking on but actually it was just a light box um which is just weird like why fake it that no this this was this was good nothing nothing interesting like that happened uh i did uh i did get to see an underground like under a series of underground labyrinthian malls so <laughs> if you go there and you go to tai, uh to the taipei main subway station there's like just these constant pathways of these like underground full of stores and we went through there one day and they just had like all these stores with gashapon machines and i just kept like trying to get a toy for my son um you know what a gashapon machine is it's that thing I, where I you, you put in money and you get the little like egg out with something inside. Uh-huh. And it was just like they had stores that were nothing but those and you uh-huh. had to get changed to like whatever. So that was that was pretty neat. Uh, but nothing, nothing, you know, bad. Nothing, nothing bad happened while I was there that I know That's of. That. Some yeah. weird dude came up to me in the in the press room and asked for my business card and then walked away and I have no idea what he's going to do with my information. But other than that, <laughs> okay. Um, so, th- so that's the weirdest thing that happened. Some I was in the press room. Some guy came up to me and he said, "I'm from a newspaper. Can I change business cards with you?" So I gave him the my business card. He gave me his, which is I could not read. And um, that's even better. And I don't know if he works for a newspaper or not. And then he sure. walked away. I was like. What are you gonna do? Okay. So if you see me, have, if you see me, someone with my name writing all kinds of weird articles in Chinese, it could be him. I okay. don't know. Fair enough. I have no idea what he's doing with my business card. But Good any, enough. but any, but that's the only really thing I can I can count as weird that happened to me. Okay. So, so the important thing to note here is that uh, only only content at a uh, laptop Mac and Tom's <laughs> Guide with Abram's name on it. Is guaranteed official. Yeah. <laughs> if you see anything outside of that, it may or may not be. Because you guys do some syndication stuff. Yeah, we but... do. Actually, some of it's going to be on Tom's. For this show, we share it with Tom's hardware as gotcha. well. So, but, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. If you see it in Chinese, it definitely wasn't. Yeah. Okay. My Chinese is not that good. Um, <laughs> but it's okay? Is that what you're saying? No. I mean, I... I, <laughs> I those of you who know me for a while know that I actually did take Chinese class for a while. So I, while I could never read and write, I, I actually can ask for a seat, um, you know, for what that's worth and tell, and tell the cab driver where to take me and stuff like that. That's, that's about the extent of it. That's better than I would do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you as always for, uh, for bringing us your Computex experience. Um, as we said at the beginning of the, of F5 live, we will not be on next week, but uh, we will we will be on in two. Cool. Excellent. All right. 